Hey everyone, it's Brian. There's probably a ton of ways to solve this. Uh, I'm gonna do it in a really weird way. You probably don't ever wanna do this unless you really, really, really hate trig substitution, but if you just don't like dealing with the trig functions, I'm gonna try to figure out how to do this uh, without using trig sub. Uh, it's gonna seem really weird. Um, I don't have a great explanation for why I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do, but it's a method that a student of mine and I were working on today, and uh, I thought I'd give it a shot. So I think I'm just gonna just start working with the integrand, and at the very end I'll integrate it. So I have this, 1 over square root of 1 plus x squared, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna add 0. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add and subtract x squared to the numerator. I'll make this... 1 plus x squared minus x squared. All right, nothing wrong there, I'm just adding zero. And now I'm gonna split this fraction up. Split it up like this, 1 plus x squared over 1 plus x squared rooted minus x squared over root 1 plus x squared. And next, uh, this bit simplifies, right? Properties of exponents, this is the same thing. So something to the first power over something to the 1 half power, that's just gonna give me uh, that thing to the 1 half power, or square rooted. And now here comes an uh, even weirder part. I'm just gonna pretend this is all a fraction, all over one, fantastic. And uh, even weirder now, okay, I'm going to add and subtract x squared in the bottom here. So I'm gonna say that this is x squared minus x squared. How about that, right? So this actually might seem super weird. Might have no clue why I'm doing this, but I'm just doing a bunch of weird algebra to make this integral something I can actually solve. So what happened here is I added, again, zero. I divided by one, that doesn't change anything, and I added zero on the denominator, that's not gonna change anything. And I'm also going to add zero in the numerator as well. I'm going to add x and subtract x in the numerator. And why am I doing this? Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna factor. I'm gonna factor the top and the bottom. So this is actually going to factor. I'll put this back in the integral now. If you factor this guy, right, this bottom, I'll treat it like this thing squared minus this thing squared. That's kind of like a difference of squares if I make this a square root squared, right? I can treat it like a square if I put a square root there. So this factors into square root of x squared plus 1 minus x times square root x squared plus 1 plus x, right? It's the difference of squares formula. Now the numerator, it also factors similar. This numerator is going to factor into root x squared plus 1 minus x and then x over root x squared plus 1 plus 1. And I'm not going to look too hard into that. Uh, you can check pretty easily if you distribute all of this. You're, you're going to get this quantity. And would you look at that? This, this actually cancels out. This, this like conjugate term just cancels right out. And so I get, I get this weird looking expression. So we've done a bunch of algebra nonsense. And I've gotten here, and what's crazy is if you notice the denominator, if I take the derivative of the denominator, I actually get the numerator, right? If I just let this be a u substitution, square root of x squared plus 1 plus x, then du, well, this would just be 1 half x squared plus 1 to the minus 1 half times 2x by the chain rule, and the derivative of x is just plus 1 but this is just a different way of writing the numerator. So our integral becomes du over u. I can integrate that, right? That's just natural log absolute value of u plus c. And I know what u is. 
u is natural log of whatever I said u was, square root of x squared plus 1 plus x plus c. And I did this whole integral without doing any trig substitution. I don't know that that's easier. I definitely think probably doing the trig sub is a whole lot easier, but some people really don't like trig. So I don't know if this is better than trig sub or not. It's a lot of adding by zero kind of out of nowhere and crazy factoring. Let's just check really quick to make sure that we got the same thing. So if you do use trig sub, the standard way to do this would be let x equal to tangent theta. That would make dx the derivative secant squared theta d theta. That would make this integral dx on top secant squared theta d theta. In the denominator, I'd have 1 plus x squared. That's 1 plus tangent squared theta. 1 plus tangent squared theta is secant squared theta. And so if I square root that secant squared on the bottom, it'll just be secant. Solve secant squared over secant. This will just be the integral of regular secant. And if you remember uh, a bit about trig, and so this is where your knowledge of trig has to come into play, the antiderivative of regular secant is natural log of secant plus tangent. And then to get from here to here, we'd have to go back to our original substitution, right? Sometimes people will draw this triangle, right? So tangent of theta, that's tangent of x over 1. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And to get this side, you'd have Pythagorean theorem, 1 squared plus x squared square rooted. And you can see by doing the normal uh, formulas for secant and tangent, tangent is x over 1, that's where this x comes from. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, that's where this term comes from. So you get the same answer. Uh, I don't know which one's easier. Probably trig sub is, is easier, but I thought this was crazy. Like I've never seen this, this technique before. I don't, think, I don't think this is standard calculus teachings anywhere in here. But it was a cool, neat technique that I wanted to share with you. So if you like this video, if you like this technique, let me know in the comments below. And I hope you have a great day.